Hello, tubers. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Western vehicle hoist. Several viewers were asking if I'd do a video on it, and along with just looking at it, I'm going to show you some of the modifications I have also made. Let's get started. So here's the model that I'll be showing you. Ooh, and I guess I've had this for a while. Yeah, it has been repainted once already. But I like the basic start with design of this where they had the dual ram and how they structured it. I knew I was going to be making some changes to it. So let me show you what we got. Now, the first thing that I changed on this was these arms. They originally, the uh, bolt here, this would have been mounted through here. And then you slide the arm on these. There would have been a stop welded right here. So you could only go X amount of degrees. You could no, not ever put this plate toward the front because it'd be out here that would be totally unsafe. Look where the bolt comes through. And you got the arm facing toward the front. You got plenty of support from this arm right here. Move to the outside, plenty of support from that arm and the channel. And for that rear arm, pretty much so. The same type of setup. Now these cylinders were a problem from day one. Uh, actually one set was even replaced before the warranty was off. What would happen is the salt water off the cars gets into the cylinder, rusts the cylinder and rips up the piston seal. So when I first got the lathe I took these apart and rebuilt them. By the way I haven't touched them since so here's, here's what I come up with. Uh, the gland nut, to get the gland nut off of these, there's a ring in here that you got to pick at, get it out, and then you slide it all the way around, and then you can pull this out. So what I did, I threw it in a lathe, I cut an O-ring groove in the gland nut here, and then to top it off, water could still get in the side here where that lock ring goes in, you know, rotate around to get in. To keep the water out of there, this can easily be picked back off, that's just some body strip caulk keeps the water from getting in there. And then they had a little vent hole on the bottom of the cylinder here too, which was part of the problem, I'm sure. Well, I cut a couple of eighth inch pipe uh, couplers in half, or cut one of the couplers in half and then stuck one on each cylinder. And then I got a little piece of foam that I keep oiled that I stick in there. So that way the cylinder can breathe as it's going up and down. Now this piece here is a safety lock in case the hydraulics were ever to fail so the car don't come down on you. Now one of the things I've done to that is originally they only had two positions. I added one in for that. And the problem with this is if you had a van on here let's say and to get that to release you got to go all the way up. And then there was a finger that would flip over inside of here which allow you then to bring it back down to ground level. So I made some changes, as you probably noticed already. Let's give you a little better look at them. Like I said, that safety lock finger is inside of here. You can see where the cable is hooked to it now. And I weld a little biscuit on here to hold the cable. So that way you can release any position you want. I had some old cable left over from the go-kart days which come in handy for that comes up and here is the homemade release mechanism a little look at that then I got a rubber foot right here which helps keep the tension on it when you lower the hoist now it hits on here and that will automatically reset it for the next time up so you don't have to worry about forgetting to lock it yeah, keep an eye on him I'll show you how it resets automatically. And we'll set it on the safety lock. There. Now if you want to get it off, put it up a little bit. Hit the release lever, yeah. and it's possible to come down. The wildlife people 
the wildlife. And your three stops. Your safety catch. He's got a piece of copper wire. Comes through there and hooks onto the cable. That goes up to that release lever. Now what I really like about this unit though is where everything is inside this locking mechanism here. That keeps the whole unit a little lower. Basically 95% of the vehicles that come in here will pass over the top without any interference. And if you'd like to know the dimension, we have that for you right here. Well, for the 5% that don't clear the top of the hoist, we'll do this the easy way. What I've been doing, I just throw a couple of 2x4s down and drive up on them. Now I'm on notch one right now. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need a whole bunch of notches. These three work just fine for me. The majority of the work, you can sit on your stool here. If you're working in a wheel well, changing a water pump on a front wheel drive car, or doing brake work or whatever. It's right here and then you can go to the top of the car and work back and forth without having to raise and lower the hoist, which is nice. Now, to give you an idea what this height is, this is where the majority of the time I use it and that would be your height for that setting right there. Now, right now I'm on the highest setting, number three. This will give you an idea of where we're at. Uh, what I use this one for is if you're going to be re removing a drive shaft out of a vehicle or putting a pinion seal or whatever, if you're on a creeper here on the floor, you got plenty of head clearance. And the other thing I like here was they just have the one beam going through, not a couple. That would be more in your way for some of the work performed. Now well, here we have the device to roll the hoist around in the shop. And this has also been modified. They had them uh, nylon wheels on here originally, like on the back. Uh, pushed real hard with them. Remember, these are them tensioner wheels off a serpentine belt. Well, you buy them tensioners for the car, they start to run off track a little bit, and the idlers are good. I always keep these things, don't throw them away. And uh, they work good for this. It rolls much easier. The other problem is, is if your floor is a little uneven, it don't raise it high enough, so you're skating the whole bottom, bottom of the hoist, which is not good. So I put a piece of 5 8 threaded bar here, and that way when I lift it to move it, you can get a lot more height. Well, I think I do. I always spray paint the floor. That way whenever you move it, you can always get it back into the same position where you prefer it. Now, notice how high I can actually lift that. I do like this T-handle setup versus the ones with all hydraulics hanging on it. So, say if all of a sudden now I get an extended gas truck in here, and just pop this up here, and we can move it ahead, a foot or so, get a little more room in the back, and you just gotta drag everything over here, unplug it, and move it around. Now, a pump unit. I want to be able to move that around easily, so put a couple wheels on the one end, a little board on the top, Velcro dog, and on the other end, I only got a swivel wheel here, so you can steer it around. Uh, the duct tape, that's to keep the RC cars from going underneath here, as you can see it came in handy already. These uh, blocks right here, the hoist came with four of these four here, and these were out a little while back. Uh, eBay is a good thing. Uh, easily found and obtained for replace them. And here's a look at the pump. And it is a 110 unit in case you wanted to know that. And there are times when the factory blocks that the hoist came with aren't enough so I created these. Yeah, nothing fancy just come up with whatever it takes to get the job done. Hey tubers, somebody's getting a little hungry here. We're running a little bit late. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, ask a question, and thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you back here again. Yep, that's what that means.
Now, an upcoming video. This car here is what I call my shop jewel. I went to Kentucky to buy this uh, and brought it back to Wisconsin. But everything from all electronics, console, uh, sensors even, shifter, that was all handmade here. I did this in the early 90s, uh, rotisserie restoration. I made a rotisserie up for under 100 bucks. But uh, so much detail to this. Somewhere down the road, probably this winter, I'm gonna be putting that video up for you folks. Hi folks, we're on break right now. I was looking at some of the paint bills. It's one of them things, it's like a joke. You tell it, some people believe it, some get it, some don't. I thought we'd give you a little tour, show you what the paint costs. You'll like this one. Still hanging in there with the sections range tomorrow, only 46. Gotta show you this item here. A little homemade shifter kind of tricked out. Gonna buy one, but we gotta have the wire connectors right here. Run a computer, feed backup lights. So we can put it over to one side and you can only go one gear at a time. Is that cool or what? Gotta have it. I wonder where these came from. Any ideas? <laughs> 